Hey guys, Chad here with the Soccer Mom Off-Road Channel, and today I'll be your host for day three, the final day of our Carson River Overland Adventure. Let me introduce the team really quickly to you. First up, we have Brian. He's driving his 80 Series Toyota Land Cruiser, and Jeremy driving his 80 Series Lexus Land Cruiser, Brandon driving his Suzuki Samurai, and me driving my Lexus GX470. Well, let me give you an overview of day one and two to get you up to speed for day three. Day one, we had some car trouble. We had fun playing on the rocks, but ultimately we got stopped by a creek that we felt uncomfortable trying to cross. So we were unable to get to the Carson River on night one. Day two, we tried to bypass the creek going around, but ultimately got stopped by snow. So we ended up camping by another really beautiful creek and having a great night. And day three, well, you'll just have to stick around and find out what happens on day three. But count on this, plenty of adventure. Before we get started, I'd love to ask a huge favor. If you just click that like button, that would mean a lot to me and it helps promote this video on YouTube. All right, without further ado, Carson River Overland, day three. Well, good morning, guys. It is a beautiful morning out here. And best night of sleep yet in the new sleep system for the GX. So today we don't we don't have a tight schedule. Most likely we'll eat some breakfast, hang out a little bit more by the fire, slowly pack up and uh, probably head back home sometime around noon ish. So we're uh, going to enjoy the last moments that we have uh, before we all have to head home today. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Brian. Happy birthday to you. Oh, nice army. Oh, oh bacon. <laughs> oh my gosh, dude, there's so much bacon in here. Let's see it. Hey, remember, today's the day. Nice. Fine swine. <laughs> is this your is this oh. your favorite bacon? Yes, it is. It's your favorite bacon. I caught myself. No better birthday present for a man than bacon. Cherry wood bacon. Your wife said, better eat it now because May 1st, you're going on a diet. My cholesterol too high. Beer and bacon for breakfast. One thing that is so nice after um, a couple just sweaty, dirty days on the trail is a shower. Now I'm standing behind our uh, our shower uh, system. This is not mine. This is a combination of the the uh, privacy. The t it's a two room changing tent that Jeremy has, and then uh, using Brian's shower uh, actual system. And uh, so last night, each of us had a, a, just a great shower and we went to bed feeling amazing. So I just want to show you, I have a shower system. I didn't bring it, um, but we'll take a look at this one because it was awesome last night. All right, so this is, uh, the shower uh, tent is the Ozark Trail, two room. I guess you could use it for anything, but it's, it's actually a shower room. So you've got a changing room here and then inside is your actual shower room and um uh, jeremy got this on sale for like 60 bucks from uh walmart which is crazy and then this is the hike crew all-in-one uh hot water shower system you you just start it then it instantly starts to put out hot water what's nice is that there's an actual temperature gauge here to let you know what what the temp is now i will say that it does not get as hot as as for instance, my system. So what you need to do, there is a drop-in water pump, a mini one that goes inside this. You need to recirculate it by taking the shower head, which is up here and I'm not gonna grab it. 
but you grab your shower head, you actually just stick it in here and then this recirculates until uh, your water gets to the temperature that you want and it works really great. So this was a real treat last night to have. So if that makes me a pansy, so be it. Well, we are packed up and we are rolling, but not to home. When you're hanging out with buddies and uh, you're having a good time, you often try to prolong goodbye uh, to have some more fun. So uh, Brian has a site for us across 395, an old cow camp and some other trails that we're gonna look at before we actually officially air up and head home. So now on to more adventure. Well, this is where we started having trouble on day three. Jeremy was having some kind of throttle issue where he could only floor it to get his cruiser to move forward, anything less, and it just stalled out. Well, he and Brian fiddled around, and I'm not sure we ever figured out exactly what was wrong, but Jeremy was able to limp forward after this. I took a moment to just gaze at the absolute beauty of our surroundings before we got moving again. Now, up until this point, all of the ruts and washouts we'd encountered had been minor. Things you would see any year um, in a place like this where creeks run alongside or sometimes through the road. But we quickly found out that due to all the precipitation we'd see received this, this previous year, the washouts and the ruts were going to be a lot different. So we are not at snow pressure. The problem is, is that mostly we're on dirt. Every once in a while we encounter a patch of snow. Snow pressure is really bad for dirt. So you try to find a happy medium between low, but not too low. But sometimes it's just not low enough.
apparently we are in a bog. Like a Trump bog? We managed to found a, find a bog. This is Jeremy's job on our trips, actually, is we send him ahead to find bogs <laughs> and places where, where the rest of us are going to get stuck, and then we avoid that place. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's some deep poop. But, like, look right behind me. It's solid. Yeah. Well, the iron pick's good for something. Man, I can tell you guys that this time of year in the desert is stunning because there's still snow and everything's greening up. It is such a beautiful place to be. The, the, the weather is perfect. The temperature is perfect. Oh, I love it out here this time of year. Let me show you guys what I'm looking at. Absolutely amazing. Look at these snow-covered mountains in the back. The flowers aren't out yet. At least not that I've seen, but green and beautiful. Oh. We may have hit a bit of a snag. That same uh, washout uh, behind us has also washed out the road in front of us. And uh, it looks like it could be the end of the trail. Uh, it looks pretty crazy to go over for us. So we're assessing our options, but we may have to reroute. <laughs> now, Jeremy gets major hero credit at this point. While the three of us were sitting around debating what we should do and which direction we should take, can we cross this creek or not, Jeremy was eyeing this dry creek bed. Now this creek bed was actually the course of the creek before it washed away the road. And as Jeremy was looking at this creek bed, we could hear him saying, I think we could make it, I think we could drive down this. Well, we turned around for one second and Jeremy was in his rig actually driving down this creek bed. And you know what? He actually led the way for us and we made it through and were able to keep going on our trip. Jeremy, you're the man.
Well, we are almost to our goal. You can see Brandon there. He's taking a right on this little road. And at the end of this road is this old homestead that Brian was trying to get us to. The end was in sight. All right, well, we, um, we have been officially stopped. Uh, we have tried, we headed up uh, to get to this little old homestead uh, cow camp and Brian got buried down to the frame and uh, it is two o'clock and we all have to get back at some point. Uh, we all have families and so we decided this is, doesn't look like much of a meadow, but it feels like one. So we're gonna have lunch here and uh, hang out and enjoy just, you know, reflecting on our trip together and then uh, get on our way. Just when we thought our adventures were over, adventure had something else up its sleeve. This creek that we had been battling for about two hours continued to cross our path over and over again, causing us challenge after challenge, as it seemed intent on keeping us stuck here in the backcountry. A snag on our route back out um, we were gonna be heading into Gardnerville uh, we've made it through so many different washouts and uh, obstacles but we've met our match with this we have walked up and down the length of this creek it's in a canyon so that's part of the problem and so we've walked up and down and there is just nowhere to cross. So Brian, expedition leader, has managed to find a few other options for us. So we're re rerouting and uh, going to try to see if we can't get ourselves out of here without having to completely retrace our steps all the way back to 395 where we crossed the road in the first place. Yikes. Any of you guys can see, but down here is a relatively tame looking road. We are trying to get to this road via <laughs> this trail right here. And that rock is crotch level. It's that big. And we've got to come down this to get to our road.
Well, guys, we have made it up the first leg. <laughs> or down. I, I should say we made it down uh, a pretty hairy section. Uh, and we've now connected with this main road that we are hoping takes us out of this area back into town. But uh, we will see. We have here an unfortunate soul who uh, did not make it out like we have. This has been here for a while, it looks like. Uh, the mud is dry. But... Well, guys, it has been an epic, epic adventure. Uh, we've seen all kinds of terrain on this trip. Snow, rocks, mud, deep ruts, unbelievable terrain, and more than I ever expected uh, for this trip. It has been an adventure for sure, but it's time to air up and get home to our families. We are, we've had some unexpected delays, and that's gonna push us all home much later than we expected. So we're all airing up and uh, getting ourselves on the trail. In fact, Brandon has already left. He's He's got a trailer, his samurai, back home to where he lives. So he has already taken off to start loading it on the trailer, but what an amazing trip. We had such a great time and uh, can't wait to do it again next year at Dad's Only Adventure On Trip. <laughs>